Dear natural ladies, I'm trying to let my sides grow for a new style. In the meantime, don't miss the message word about my hair. I promise you my edges are fine. Hello, hello, I am back with another video. And the purpose of this particular video is to introduce you to your shadow self while dating or in a relationship. So to encourage people to bring their shadow self with them in the beginning. You know, um, a lot of times we go out on dates or meeting new people if it's just a, a business uh, dinner or, or lunch and we want to show one side you know we want to show one side of ourselves in order to be maybe professional in order to be you know nice girl or whatever it is the image that you're trying to bring forth but then people let's say just be yourself and so my understanding of just being yourself is letting a person experience you totally <laughs> your shadow self as well and so i wanted to do this video and dedicate this video to the nice girls who may come up in church they may come up from in church and just think nice matters and in 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 righteousness is all about what would jesus do principle you know and i gotta be nice you know if i want to make it through the pretty gates or to heaven or whatever it is that you believe a long time ago that was this guy that i dated and he, anyway he told me he said bridget you cannot go to a fight without a weapon if you go unprepared you lose all the time and me at that time at my lower self thought he meant a physical weapon you know a gun a knife or whatever but as I evolved to Bridget and in, in my journey, I look at other meanings and what people say is that's something that stuck with me because you can take that, what he said, and you could apply it to even relationships. Bridget, you should not go meeting new people <laughs> or entertaining new relationships without knowing something about the game <laughs> because if you don't know nothing about it you lose every time and so i'm saying that to the the, the nice girls that exist and i wanted to break it down to them as clear as possible from a heart perspective from a religious or conscious perspective so, so, so they can see how I now look at that. So, so we can be nice. We can be thoughtful. We can be truthful. We can be sweet. <laughs> we can be given, but then we'll hear the term that nice girls finish last. And so we, we, we sometimes can be in our journey where we feel that that is true, that, 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 that we're losing because we're giving, 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 and we're not receiving, 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 right? And so I look at that like this here now. I feel as though people, people need to experience a mixture or a totality of us. Like the totality of God, our yin and our yang. Our sugar, well, our sweet, so to speak, and our sour. You know, our feminine versus our masculine. And so in a beginning relationship, some people actually do this. Women and men, they'll do this. They'll, they'll, they'll try to get to know the person, maybe through some type of emotional tactics to see how they'll respond. You know, they'll say certain things to see what, you know, how they'll react. You know, so the man probably doing it to the woman to see if she's needy or thirsty. Meanwhile, the woman is probably doing something to the man to see if he a duck and you just gonna go quacking and do whatever she say. You know, in the beginning of the relationship, people do that. It's, it's almost like you're testing to see who you're dealing with. To see if they, you're going to show them or if they're going to show you the totality of who they are. And if when they do show you the totality of who they are, are you going to like it? 
So oftentimes when a person just show you the totality and the totality is only nice, they may get a little bit bored with just that only nice because they, they think that is all that you are. You don't have an edge. You don't have excitement. You know, you just, you're just nice girl. <laughs> and so the nice girl may be suppressing her <laughs> other side for some reason or, or because maybe she just don't want to go in and explore her other side. Maybe she think her other side is too much of the devil and that, you know, you have to resist the devil so he will flee, you know, if you're coming up in church, right? But I believe, you remember like on TV how they used to have, um, how they'll show in the movie that they have this, this the devil talking to this person on this shoulder here with the pick, pick fork, pitchfork. And the uh, the angel with the you know white gown and the halo talking to that per that same person on this shoulder, I believe that that represents us all that we all have those good versus evil thoughts in our mind in our you know subconscious mind that just flow. And so I believe that we should embrace those thoughts. So let's say we're meeting somebody. This is a nice girl. She has a thought anyway, but this could be an example of her embracing those thoughts in order to show the totality <laughs> of who she really is. Because this is really why, this is the core of why men love bees, you know? You, you ever heard that? Men love bees. <laughs> so let's say the, um, okay, so this is the, the, the nice girl. She's sitting here at her phone. Her phone is, is, is ringing. And her phone is ringing from a guy who maybe she went out on a couple of dates with and and she have this standard you know she 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 looks at consistency in the dating process to tell her if the person is into her so this particular guy that's calling her right now he has not been consistent he hasn't so she has the devil thinking or thoughts and then she have those angelic thoughts and the devil might be saying don't answer the phone for his ass you see <laughs> and then the little angel would would say well okay it's been three days now and he's still calling you should reply now and so when she does reply if she gives in to what the angel said, and when she does reply, the devil is going to tell her something similar. She going to feel some type of disharmony there because of her standards or requirements that weren't met, her expectations that weren't met. And so then the devil might say, well, when you call him back, just ask him what the hell he want. <laughs> and then the, you call him and then the angel might say, well, you could tell him that you did think about him once. And here go the devil. Well, you you need to let him know. If he ever do that again, that's going to be the last time. You see, so we have these thoughts. And if you allow a person to experience you like that, the totality of that, I believe that you just show that person your sweet and your sour, your yin and your yang, <laughs> your masculine and your feminine. I believe that in the physical reality, you could say what you will to anybody. It's just how you deliver the message. But it lets people know that you're just not a rug to be just trampled on, you know? If you have the ability to let them experience both sides of you. And so if you only the type of person that wants, you know, if you're the nice girl, you will only want a person to experience your pleasure. What begins to happen in that particular relationship is that you come off as boring or, or, or known as the nice girl because you, you, you don't have no highs and no lows. You just, just always just nice. 
Just letting them see, feel, feel the pleasure. You don't have no bad days. You know, we're energy. Energy fluctuates. The sun don't never shine at the same temp each day. For the seven day broadcast, if you're looking at the, if you're the first type of person that watch the news, you'll never see it at the same temp every day. But then they have the nice girls who's always same. Just because you just want to be pleasurable at one degree. <laughs> but then on the flip of that, if you only allow a person to experience pain from you, then you come off as the mean chick. You come off as the mean chick. And so the mean chick is AKA like um, masculine energy. It's almost like you button heads with a man. You're exuding masculine energy as a woman and then you're dealing with a man. And so a man's not going to want to deal with another man. But if you can embrace the totality of God, the ability to show that or show him that pain and that pleasure, then you can embrace your God self and show him your God self. And so what happens in the long run in this type of situation, the, the nice girl versus the, we'll call her the B. <laughs> let's look always, let's always think about long-term here in relationships. Long term in relationships, if you keep it up being Miss Nice Girl, you're going to be done slobbed on so many knobs. You're going to be done got so trampled through sexually, so trampled on because you was just that rug that was just laying there willing to do just about any and everything. It's almost going to be like a relationship that he has with his mom. You're always there. You're going to cook, you're going to clean, you're going to just be there for him. And what's going to happen with you is the same thing that's going to happen. Well, it's a similar thing that's going to happen with the mom. But see, the mom, her purpose is to love on her child, show him her unconditional love. But one day, just like he is going to do mom, he's going to do the same to you. He's going to leave mom, he's going to leave you, and he's going to go find his wife. The woman with some kind of standards, with some type of ability to show the totality of the, her God self, her good versus evil self. Her ability to tell him no. No, you're not about to do that to me. Her ability to walk away from him. And not just be needy. And not just be nice. And not just conform to who he wants her to be. But who to, to the woman that she already is. And so if we think about this here as far as our righteousness and our heart is concerned, because I don't wanna I don't want anybody Assuming that I'm trying to tell you to be evil. Let's go, let's go worship the devil. No, no, no. I'm not saying none of that craziness. I know we all have different ideas of what we look at as God. But let me just share you. Just, just, just for thought. Just to simulate thought. How I look at God. I look at God as being the most powerful form of energy that there is. And I don't believe in the so-called hell is this a physical place where my physical body is going to be burning because when I die, my physical body is going to be no more. <laughs> I believe that hell is a place where we have our mindsets attuned to, where we are not in alignment with who we really are, when we refuse to take the helmet off of our head and obtain some type of knowledge of truth, of self. And, and we're only going to find that when we go inside of self. And experience self. And so with that being said, I also believe that my judgment is not going to be a white man in the sky judging me from the things that I did. I believe that to be mental in my conscious thoughts of how I lived in this 
matrix in this physical reality. So basically what I'm saying here is my thoughts and how I handle things is how I'm going to judge. Who's going to be judging me? It will be me judging me. And in me judging me, <laughs> consciously, I also believe that my heart, it is likened to the law of my, you know, the laws of my God. In that my heart will be placed on a scale, so to speak. And weighed, and it should be as light as a feather, based upon my consciousness, based upon my doing, my actions, my physical life. And so if it's my consciousness looking at how I spent my physical reality, and if I did these things to people in relationships, if I show them how to experience me, the totality of me, by the evil and the good, <laughs> then what I was doing with them was for the greater good, my greater good of evolving in my journey. Now, I don't believe that because I was evolving in my journey for my greater good, that I consciously am going to punish myself because it was for the greater good of the all. You see, when you do things for the greater good for the all, <laughs> the universe expands. Your consciousness expands, but the universe as the whole expands because you're doing it for the all. And so we're going to use that same thought process for God itself. And I look at God as source energy, being fire, air, water, and earth, being light and dark, the feminine and masculine, being the totality. So I don't imagine God or source energy or carbon or melanin or dark matter, whatever you call it. I don't imagine it saying to itself when it does something that's so-called evil. I don't imagine it saying, oh my gosh, am I going to go to hell now? Because I caused this tsunami over there. I caused this hur hurricane. I caused this tornado. Am I going to go to hell now? I'm God. <laughs> no, because the workings of God, which is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher, <laughs> giver of life and the taker, <laughs> does things for the greater good of the all. So when that hurricane Katrina came in New Orleans and people, lives were taken, that energy was transformed. Energy is never destroyed. It's simply transformed. So it was transformed back into the all for the greater good of the all to evolve. That didn't just happen. It was perfectly orchestrated by source energy for those accounted people to be no more in the physical reality, but that energy didn't die. It was transformed. <laughs> So what I'm saying here is when you're showing somebody just like God itself shows you good and evil on a daily basis. <laughs> when you show people your good and your evil, so to speak, on a daily basis, I believe that you have embraced the totality of God within you. And so at that moment, at that moment, if you can embrace the totality of the God in you, now you can have a relationship with a person and you can show them the fullness of who you are while maintaining that relationship with yourself and staying in alignment with 
source. Because see, the relationship with yourself, your good versus your evil self, is the most important relationship that you're ever going to have in the physical reality. So if no other relationship is in balance, that should be the one. That should be the one. So I just wanted to take a moment and introduce you to the shadow side of dating or being in a relationship so that you could always have balance with yourself and you could always evolve. <laughs> and it'll leave a place with just enough room for you to meet God on your journey. For you to experience the God within. And that was from my heart to yours, babe. Be blessed.